What's up, guys? Tom here with Team Golden Age coming at you with a deck profile and tutorial for Rocket Phantom Knight Orcist. Uh, I've been playing this deck the last couple of weeks after playing more of a standard PK Orcus build. If you're a longtime subscriber to the channel or if you want to check out some older videos, we've been hosting some events out here in West Texas. And I've been uh, kind of killing it with Orcus. The deck is still uh, certainly playable. Uh, I won't call it meta. But I think it's a deck that certainly deserves respect uh, in the upcoming format, especially if some of the bigger decks have been um, cut down. Um, but so this deck plays through a lot more than standard Orcus builds. There's a lot of times that you just normal summon a monster. They have an Ash Blossom or an Infinite Impermanence. Um, unless you're playing something like Extenders, like the Dangers, or a Foolish Burial, you just get stopped. Uh, this deck allows you to play through. Uh, so many more things um, as it currently stands. It has a really good uh, going first board. And also Orcus has had a very uh, a lot of success in the past for breaking boards. So let's get into the uh, couple of test hands here. Uh, as you can see, this is a pretty good test hand. Um, anytime you get quick launch in Gearsu, that's always a plus. And then you also have the extender in the danger. And you're always going to have this cloak in the graveyard. So I like to start my combos out always, always, always trying to do the dragon combo. You do a very small dragon package, which I will show at the end of the video. So you will link off Tracer to or make Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon will trigger. And you will add Boot Sector Launch to hand. Striker Dragon then will activate its effect to pop itself and add Tracer to hand. You will then activate Boot, Summoning Tracer. Tracer will then pop the Boot Sector launch and summon out Rocket Recharger from the deck. Now this locks you into Dark uh, for, uh, from the extra deck. Uh, you really do not care. Uh, this deck is almost entirely Darks. There's one non-Dark in this deck. Uh, and... You just do not care about any of these cards that lock you into darks. So here, uh, you get there's two different lines of play um, depending on like your opening hand. If you open a great normal summon like a gear suit, like an Armageddon Knight, uh, you open gra like a way to summon Greffer and trigger its effect. Uh, typically, you then go make a Borrowed Savage Dragon, uh, and then you have the hand trap for the rest of the turn or that. Um, If you have the, the follow-up, you summon the Borrowed Savage Dragon, and then you just stop your opponent from having a hand trap or from being able to uh, do something like Nibiru on you. Uh, it's a really, really good follow-up card. Um, it's a really, really good... It's a really, really good card to prevent your opponent from having something. You only get one negation, but sometimes that's all you need to hit the Nibiru or to hit the uh, the hand trap and allow you to keep pushing through. Uh, you also play Chaos Lily, Chaotic Magical Dragon. You only are using it really for its first effect. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can excavate the top five cards of your deck. And if you do, you can add one excavated Light or Dark Monster to your hand. Also send the remaining cards to the graveyard. So you're going to summon this card. This card is insane. A lot of times you will mill uh, so many Orcus cards. Uh, I've had times where you mill a Gearsu. I've built Gearsu, Nightmare, Skeleton, Brass, and a Phantom Knights of Torn Scales. So, you will mill five here. And as you can see, this is uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, you get the boots in the graveyard. You got Tracer access. Or you got another Tracer. Uh, you could add Snake to your hand. You could add Armageddon Knight to your hand here. Then you have Armageddon Knight and a Gearsu. Uh, and you also have Orcus Nightmare. Sometimes, you know, if you mill the brass, you want to add the Nightmare to your hand. Uh, or if you have something like Orchestrated Return, uh, and it, you can add it to your hand, draw two more cards, and just keep digging deeper into your deck. Uh, this is actually quite a difficult uh, decision here. Uh, but let's, uh, let's add the Snake to our hand, just so we can make sure we can end up getting another summon. So now we're going to Normal Summon Gearsu. Uh, the gear suit effect is going to go through. Uh, you already have the nightmare engraved, so here we will probably uh, send a world wand. 
And then we will activate uh, Danger Snake so you'll reveal it. Uh, you don't really care about this crescendo um, in times like this because if your opponent doesn't have anything to stop you, you will be going full combo. Um, you could also set the crescendo and have an extra negation. So um, actually, yeah, let's set the crescendo here. So now you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're going to hit the cloak. That's probably the best card to be hit in this particular hand. Draw a card. Now you've got return. Um, just start doing some standard Orcus plays. Now you have a Galatea. You can uh, link off the Chaos Road, the Chaotic Magical Dragon, uh, if you so please. Um, if not, uh, then you just have a 3K beater uh, chilling over there. Uh, it can also be used with something like a Gizmek to uh, overlay and make hard make Dingirsu. So now let's banish Nightmare. Uh, our target here is irrelevant going first. Um, but we'll send the skeleton. You could also send the skeleton off of the Girsu effect um, and then dump Wand off the Nightmare depending on uh, if you're going first or second and if that uh, attack boost is relevant. Um, so we're going to link these off and make a Rusty. Rusty's effect will trigger. And we happen to have the Phantom Knights of Torn Scale still in deck. Um, I found that this deck card is really, really good as an extender, uh, especially if you draw into any of the Phantom Knight package. Um, it, it's just insane. Um, and then we can uh, we can actually banish Boots here to get our second copy of Fogblade to hand. Uh, Torn Scales will also trigger. Summoning back out. Uh, we can also banish Cloak. To get a Shade Brigadine. Uh, then we will banish Skeleton. Summon back Galatea. Here we will use Galatea's effect. Shuffling back the World Wand. And we will be getting Orchestrated Babble out from the deck. You will then overlay your Din Girsu. And you will use the effect to attach. Uh, you could trigger the Rusty. Some, a lot of people like to uh, use Rusty to um, pop the Ding. And then this way you could just put the Skeleton right back in Grave. Um, I mean, you're going to link it off immediately anyway, right here. And we're going to summon IP. And, um, yeah, that's your end board. Uh, so what you have on your opponent's turn is you will have double fog blade, you will have IP, you have cards in your hand that you're able to discard, you have a rusty pop if you summon uh, Ding Girsu. Uh You can banish Nightmare so after you summon the Ding. So on your opponent's turn, you can summon Ding. Uh, you could potentially pop and send. And then you can uh, mask Arena away. For Long Girsu. Now you have the ability, after you've resolved your Nightmare, now you have the ability to... Um, nightmare typically, in this situation, is going to... I would probably say dump the skeleton simply because you need a way to access your Orcus monsters again. Now you have the ability to send whatever is linked here, and it makes Crescendo live. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six forms of interruption on your opponent's turn, and you will also have a follow-up play. So this deck can play a lot. Um, it play through a lot, and it can play... Uh, a lot of interruptions as opposed to some of the other Orcus builds out there that maybe aren't quite as strong going first. Here we go into test number two, another really good opening hand. Um, we're going to start off here by acting, activating Reinforcement of the Army. And in this particular hand, we are going to grab Dark Refer. I've been playing a couple different variations of Orcus um, the last couple months without 
major events going on. And um, I can tell you that uh, Greffer's been in and out of the deck quite a few times. Um, but it currently has its place for sure in this deck. You play a lot of the, uh, higher level monsters, a lot of dark monsters. Um, and it can send pretty much everything in the deck. So we're going to grab it here. We're going to special summon it by pitching Nessie. And we're going to um, add Jackalope to our hand. Uh, then we're going to trigger Greffer. And we can actually pitch Jackalope. And Greffer is going to send Nightmare. And we are also going to special summon a Mothman. Uh, here now we're going to activate World Legacy uh, Orchestrated Return, pitching the World Legacy World Wand. And we're going to draw two cards. Not the best draws in the world, uh, but uh, a lot of times you just want to dig into your deck. And we still do have Orcus access here. Um, at this point, I'm going to activate Orchestrated Babel, uh, just to for additional protection if your opponent does have a hand trap or something that could potentially, like, like a DD Crow, now you have the cards in the graveyard to stop the, the opponent. So now we're going to normal summon Brass. And here is where we're going to get into our combo. We're going to summon Galatea. And then we're going to go into Rusty. Uh, what's really cool is a couple of the lines in this deck. Um, the whole Tracer play with a quick launch is the fifth summon for your Synchro Summon. So it either forces them to have to like Nibiru, or potentially waste an Imperm on the Vorload Savage Dragon, or on the Chaos Ruler. Um, right here, we had summoned a Greffer. We had summoned the Greffer. We had summoned the Mothman. We had summoned the Brass. We had summoned the Galatea. So your fifth summon now is your Rusty. Uh, it will force your opponent to have to um, Nibiru right here. If, if they have it, they have it. If not, then uh, you're pretty much going to plus a lot. Um, I always like to summon boots as quickly as possible if I have Rusty in hand, or Rusty on the field, uh, simply because once this is sent to grave, at worst, um, if your opponent Nibiru's you here, um, you're going to end up with a fog blade, which there could be a lot worse things than ending up with just a fog blade. So now we're going to trigger Rusty's effect. Since we drew the boots, uh, once again, you just send the torn scales, and we can grab a fog blade here. Now we're going to start Orcus comboing. We're going to Nightmare. To dump Skeleton. And then we can Skeleton out Galatea. Now Galatea's effect will trigger. And we can actually put Skeleton on the bottom of the deck here. And get Orchestrated Return. And we can World Wand and special out your Orcus Nightmare. So now we will overlay for Dingirsu and get back our World Wand. Uh, I might have gotten a little ahead of myself here. You probably want a World Wand um, back to Skeleton. So you have Skeleton, Nightmare, and Grief. Uh, at this point, it's. Not the worst thing in the world to have what you currently have here. Um, so we're going to link off Boots and the Dingirsu for IP. And then you will banish Boots. Uh, that will also trigger your Torn Scales. And that will grab your second copy of Fogblade. And then you can link these guys away to summon a second copy of Galatea. And uh, it kind of sucks that you don't end up getting the uh, zone for Dingirsu immediately. Um, but you are in a really good position. You have a Crescendo, which negates just about anything. You have double Fogblade. You have your IP. Um, so you can just preemptively IP and Galatea. Uh, link it away into something that could just uh, interrupt your opponent. And then you could uh, use Nightmare to dump ske uh, Skeleton, summon back Dingirsu, and then you get a pop and a send potentially. So again, another really good opening hand that uh, you can kind of just 
put up a ton of interruptions for your opponent. All right, yet another good hand. Uh, we're going to start this one off once again by getting our good friend, uh, Dark Greffer, uh, wherever he is in this deck. And we're going to start off by doing the Tracer player. So we're going to normal summon Tracer. Go into Striker Dragon. Striker Dragon will trigger. Getting boot to hand. I'm going to use its effect to pop itself and Tracer back. Activate boot sector. Special summon Tracer. This combo is also really nice later in the game. Uh, sometimes uh, if you still haven't gotten to boot yet uh, for whatever reason, um, and say you do end up getting a Tracer in the graveyard, um, you, you can just bring back things with boot. Uh, if your opponent interrupts your play, uh, you know, you just somehow whiff on excavating five cards. Um, you know, you can uh, use boot as a mini soul charge and just get things back. And also the tracer being level four, a level four tuner. Uh, Greffer is a level four. Um, your other normal summons, Gearsu is a level four. We play Raid Raptor Stranglelanius, which just says if you control a dark monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. It locks you into dark monsters, but so does everything else in this deck, so that's completely irrelevant. But that's a level four you can just special summon and uh, synchro off with tra uh, Tracer. And then also your uh, Phantom Lights of Shade Brigadine is also a level four uh, dark uh, monster. So it's another good card to just kind of sit on. So here, because we have all the gas, uh, you're going to summon the Savage Dragon as your fifth summon. They're not going to have anything, so you're going to summon Striker Dragon. Now we're going to special summon Greffer by pitching Orcus Nightmare. Then we're going to pitch Suchi Noko to send a Symbol Skeleton, and Snake will trigger special summoning. Now we will banish Nightmare. Oops, that's not going to hand. Uh, it's going to Graveyard. So we're going to send a Wand, banish Wand. Make a Taya. Now here you can use Taya preemptively uh, because we have the protection. We're going to activate the Babel. You're going to get your Rusty. We're going to just shotgun the boots, kind of. Uh, Rusty's effect. You're going to get your Fog Blade. And once again, because we've opened a one of Phantom Knight and all of our test hands, uh, you're just going to dump the Torn Scales. You're going to get Galatea back. Uh, you're summon it, always summon it to the zone rusty points too. You, if you need to trigger it, you can trigger it. Um, it's not really too much of a big deal. Uh, if you don't, uh, then we're going to make IP. We're going to banish boots. Get our second copy of Fogblade. Uh, you can trigger the Torn Scales here to summon it. So you have a piece to link off with IP. Um, Unfortunately, really the best link three or something that you can link into for uh, disruption that's generic uh, is probably a nightmare monster. Uh, we didn't end up with any cards in our hand, uh, which you could if you want to keep the fog blade. Um, but that, that's kind of your call. Do you want to end with the fog blade, or do you in hand, or on the field? Uh, it also depends kind of on what you're playing against. Um, but here you can see again. You have the access in the graveyard with Nightmare, Skeleton, and Dingirsu. Uh, so you have the pop, Ascend, you have IP Disruption, and you have a Negate with Boreal Load Savage, and you have Double Fog Blade. Um, so this deck, again, putting up a bunch of uh, interaction with your opponent, and uh, it can play through multiple hand traps. So if your opponent did have something for the Savage Dragon, your follow-up would have been... Uh, 
Greffer with Tsuchinoko and Nightmare, and you wouldn't, you still would have ended up with the same board minus the Savage, uh, Savage Dragon, but you would have been able to play through something like the Nibiru. We'll give one more last uh, test hand here. So we got the Girsu Crescendo Shade Brigadine Foolish Foglight. Not the best hand, but you're still going to end up with quite the board. So you're going to normal summon Girsu, uh, activate its effect. Uh, hopefully your opponent doesn't have any kind of interruption for it. Uh, it's going to be an interesting format uh, because of things like um, if, if Virtual World's the best deck, uh, where will people play uh, things like uh, Imperm? Um, will people play things like Nibiru? Will they main deck stuff? Uh, so as long as you're not playing in too much of a hand trap heavy, um, like local or event, uh, this deck I think could do ridiculously well. Uh, so we're going to resolve Gearsu here. And we're going to almost, almost, almost always uh, dump Nightmare. Uh, Gearsu's effect then is going to activate, and we're going to get tokens. Uh, I like to summon my token to this zone on my opponent's side of the field, because if it resolves... Uh, and then say your opponent Lancey is here. Worst case, you can just make a Galatea that they can't destroy by battle unless they get rid of this token. Um, just something that, you know, it, occasionally it comes up. It's very niche. But if it does, it does. Uh, so we're just going to make Link Karibo. Link Karibo is really, really good if you're playing against Dino as well. Uh, simply because it um, can tribute off the token. Uh, so now we're going to summon Galatea. Uh, we're going to activate Shade Brigadine here. We don't control a, we don't have a trap card in the graveyard, so that puts another dark on the board. And here we get to make our standard Rusty plays. And now Rusty will trigger. Uh, one really nice thing about this deck I have come to notice is um, there's a lot of hands that once your opponent sees what you're playing, uh, they play a lot more cautiously. Uh, something that against Orcus, you know, before you might just summon Girsu, uh, they know that they uh, can just hand trap it or have any kind of interruption, and it's just going to stop your turn. Uh, but now you have all these extenders, uh, like, like I said, the Strangle Lanius, you play the Dangers, um, the Phantomite package is like ridiculously good um, and very easy to. Uh, get things on the board. Uh, then you have a card like Foolish Burial here. Which just by doing this basic combo, Gearsu plus any any extender is going to get you this. Uh, there was a combo with Gearsu last format uh, with Link Cross, uh, which it did this entire combo by itself. Uh, but with Link Cross out of the format, that is no longer an applicable combo. So we're going to dump Skeleton. Uh, we're going to tell you back the Nightmare here. And we are going to get Babel, a really, really good card. So I don't play the Dragoon package in here. Um, that is something that I just don't deem uh, completely necessary. Um, I think the deck already plays enough uh, bricks inherently that you don't need it. Um, and uh, th this this pretty much does the same thing. Uh, as you've seen for the first uh, couple of examples here, you end with a really impressive board. Uh, and sometimes you don't end up with a card in hand, or you like you use out on a fog blade. So it kind of comes down to: Do you want to play three more bricks versus potentially and having a negation uh, for just about anything, uh, as well as um, versus like setting up a fog blade? Uh, the extra deck space is kind of irrelevant because you probably would just cut IP and something maybe like unicorn uh, or this uh, nightmare phoenix. You do have like one kind of floating spot. Uh, maybe two, depending on if you want to play Long Gursu, but Long Gursu isn't out to Dragoon. Um, 
but it kind of just depends on what you want to do and how you want to um, play the deck. But uh, this is how I play it. And as you can see, um, just essentially Gear Suit plus an extender uh, got me to uh, the Double Fog Blades, the Babel, Rusty, IP. Uh, we opened the Crescendo. We would have had two uh, Double Fog Blade regardless because we didn't open the boots. Uh, we didn't open a Phantom Knights card, so we would have been able to banish it and get something off. And then next turn, we have this Fool's Burial as a follow-up play. Uh, we could have potentially done Foolish Burial um, as well and dumped something like a World Wand to summon back the Nightmare. Um, this way you have Nightmare and your Skeleton potentially ready in the graveyard. Uh, either way, uh, this is putting up a lot of interruption for your opponent, and it's going to be tough for them to break through unless they're playing something uh, pretty, pretty crazy. All right, guys, I will leave the link in the description if you want to test this deck out yourself on Dueling Book. Um, we're going to go over each card real, real quick. Uh, we play one Armageddon Knight. Uh, you just everything plays off of playing things out of the graveyard. One Dark Greffer, again, same thing. You play a lot of high-level darks, so it's a free special summon uh, as an extender. Sometimes you just want that, and just to get the Nightmare into the graveyard, don't even worry about dumping the monster uh, off of its effect. We play a small danger package, one Mothman, because it can be normal summoned as opposed to something like Bigfoot. Bigfoot is something to consider as well, because if it resolves, uh, it's something that can crash with a lot of things like Dragoon or uh, potentially something like Calamities. Uh, it will just body up against it, uh, depending on what your opponent's uh, end board has, uh, is. So we, but we play the one Mothman, uh, one Nessie, one Jackalope, one Snake, pretty standard. Uh, they're just free summons. Uh, the Orcus Package, it's three gears, so this card is absolutely insane. Um, best card in the deck uh, by far. Uh, if Harp was legal, um, this deck would be cutting through a lot of a lot of people and a lot of decks. We play one Brass Bombard. Uh, Brass is uh, a, a pretty good normal summon. It's a good extender. Uh, I like it at one. There are some lists that are playing it at three. Because um, if you can normal summon it, link off on a link three bow banish it, and then you can summon a Skeleton, a Nightmare, or a Gear Suit from the hand, and it kind of just avoids, uh, plays around a lot of hand traps, um, which is usually pretty good. Uh, it's also a level 1 tuner. You do play a couple of level 7s in the main deck. Nightmare's a level 7, and Nessie's a level 7. Uh, so you do have potential to uh, Synchro Summon your Chaos Ruler, or your um, Savage Dragon late in the duel, uh, using Brass and one of those monsters, and just kind of really putting your opponent on a different kind of clock because you're either going to mill a bunch of cards and then still have things like your Nightmare to use, or you're going to summon Savage Dragon in the middle of uh, you know the mid-game, which can sometimes be a major clincher. Uh, I like it at one in this current build because I'm playing a diff couple different extenders, but you can play this card at three for sure, especially if you're playing a high Orcus count. Two Skeleton. We do play Gizmek, so you have to play two because uh, if you banish one, um, it really, really hurts because uh, you really have to play around that for the remainder of the duel. Uh, but two of this card is still ridiculously good and allows you just freedom to kind of uh, just play through just about anything and not have to worry about managing your resources quite as much. Uh, three Nightmare. Uh, this card's really, really good. All these cards are really good, I'll, but I'll keep saying that. Um, but it, it gets whatever you need. Uh, the attack boost does come up quite often. Um, you know, sometimes you just need that little extra punch uh, to get over your opponent. Double World Wand. Uh, World Wand can trigger off of itself. Or it uh, can trigger the sub special summon itself from the hand if it's sent from the uh, to the graveyard. Uh, which does come up every once in a while if you need another body on the board. Uh, we play the one Gizmek, the unofficial... Um, Orcus monster, every time I've ever thought about cutting this card, uh, I do some playtesting and it completely comes up where if I didn't have this card, I would just flat out lose. Can't cut this card, it's ridiculously good, uh, especially when it comes up uh, as an extender. We play Triple Tracer, you want to see your uh, package, rocket package, we play the Triple Quick Launch. Uh, this doesn't summon from hand, but from deck, so we want to maximize on our tr um, targets for it. Uh, you play the one Recharger. Uh, this also has a cute interaction where um, late in the game, if you draw a recharger or if you draw a quick launch, um, 
You can summon Recharger, make your Striker Dragon, Striker Dragon uh, pop itself and add Recharger to hand, and then discard the Recharger to trigger its effect. And all you're playing are darks. So you can summon back uh, something like a Girsu if you need to start your Orcus combo. You can summon back a Galatea. You can summon back a Ding Girsu. Uh, it's a really, really uh, cool interaction when it comes up. It rarely comes up, but when it does, it's something good to have in your back pocket. Uh, one Phantom Knight's uh, Ancient Cloak, one Silent Boost, and one Torrent Scales. You don't want to see these cards in your hand. Torrent Scales is for if you do. Uh, every once in a while, uh, it's effect to discard one card and send a Phantom Knight's card from deck to graveyard comes up. Uh, sometimes it's good to just get those cards out of your hand and then continue on with your plays from there. You could potentially send something like a Fog Blade to use as an extender, uh, or you could dump one of your Phantom Knight monsters, uh, such as Cloak. Uh, then Banish Cloak, add a Shade Brigadine to your hand, and if you're pitching something like a Nightmare, uh, you have like your full combo right there. Uh, really all it does is it takes just one Orcus monster and like two other Dark monsters. Uh, like That's all the access it takes to do like your full, full, full combo. And then we play the one Strangle Lanius. Uh, still debating on this card if it needs to be at more um, than one, because uh, it's a once per turn. Um, but this card's another extender. You just want to play extenders so you can make sure you're summoning Orcus monsters. You can make sure you're getting to your Rusty. Uh, it's a level four, so it does have the synergy with the Tracer to be able to uh, synchro summon into what you need to synchro summon. Uh, like I said, we're playing the triple quick launch. This card's insane. Don't know how it dodged the uh, Forbidden Limited list. We play double return. Um... This deck does grind a lot, and sometimes you need the, the hand advantage of uh, being able to uh, get return. Uh, it also can be used as a, um, a defensive card. There are times where if you're playing against an opponent, you know they have that uh, Shadal Fusion in hand, or um, you're playing against like Dogmatica, you could potentially clear your extra deck monster, uh, such as your Dingirsu, and get rid of, um, get rid of them. And then uh, draw two cards, and then you pass turn, and that fusion's now dead. That Ecclesia uh, can't special summon itself, uh, and it just forces your opponent to have to play uh, more awkwardly uh, than they would before. Uh, it's also uh, when I play two, uh, one's usually typically a free side out uh, as well. Uh, one boot sector launch, one orchestrated babble. Uh, I don't think those really need explanation. Uh, Foolish Burial doesn't need an explanation. A deck that all wants to be in the graveyard. Monster Reborn gets those monsters out of the graveyard. And one reinforcement of the army to search Armageddon Knight, Dark Greffer, or any of the Phantom Knight monsters in case you need them. Uh, then you play one Crescendo, double Fog Blade. Uh, you only need two. Uh, if you play three, it becomes more bricky. And uh, one Phantom Knight's a Shade Brigandine. Uh, just in case you draw something like the Fog Blade, you always want uh, the Phantom Knight package to be as live as possible to resolve Rusty. Because uh, as long as you can resolve Rusty, you're going to win uh, the duel. Uh, now for the extra deck, you play the one Borrowload Savage and the one Chaos Ruler, the Chaotic Magical Dragon. Uh, as I explained earlier, those cards are really, really good. Uh, they can be used, they're just big beat sticks on top of uh, Savage having the negation. And then uh, Chaos Ruler just being uh, what you need and dumping five cards um, and being an extender as well. We play Double Ding. Uh, this card is still ins absolutely insane. Non-targeting, non-destruction effects will always be good in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and then the attaching uh, can be used as an extender, especially if you're using it in tandem with Rusty. Um, you know, you can trigger the Rusty for that pop instead of having to use Ding to send a card. Uh, and it keeps all your resources uh, going and going and going. Uh, one access code talker, we're playing this over Boral Sword. It actually just seems easier to make, especially if you're playing a, a couple of Link 3s. Um, and it, it can win you a lot of games. You only get maybe one pop. At most, you're going to get two pops. Um, but usually by then, if you're making access code talker, you're in a really good position and probably going to win the uh, win anyway. Uh, Boral Sword uh, is better for uh, lethal. Uh, as an access code talker with a made with a link three plus a ding girsu is uh, just short of game by a hundred life points. Uh, the fifty three plus twenty six is uh, seventy nine hundred. Um, so unless you're going to resolve something like a nightmare later on, 
uh, to give a boost or dump a, get something like a Giznek. Uh, you will need something else. But at that point, if you're summoning Dingusu, if you're summoning Access Code Talker, you've probably put your opponent on quite the clock uh, at 100 life points remaining. Uh, Barricade Borg Blocker, this card's really, really, really important to the deck. Uh, just simply because it's a dark, um, it's just a dark machine that can be made with two monsters with different names. Uh, and it has a discard on top of that. That's exactly everything you need out of it. Um, sometimes it comes up that you want to add back the, the uh, field spell, which you can add back a boot um, in your end phase. And then next turn, you can use boots uh, effect, uh, quite like a soul charge, and potentially uh, continue on from there. You can add back a babble. Either way, Barricade Borg uh, does come up a lot, especially if you do get Nibiru and are able to continue playing through it. Uh, we play two Galatea. Uh, three is not incorrect, but this deck is a little bit tighter. Uh, so we got to play two. I uh, just got to make sure you're managing your resources properly, uh, as this is uh, the most important card in your extra deck. One IP, we're not playing Dragoons, as I said before. Uh, so you play IP instead. Uh, the same thing that it's always done in Orcus. Uh, we play one Phoenix. Uh, just generic back row removal is always going to be good in this game. Unicorn, same thing. You want to get that spin. Uh, potentially on your opponent's turn, making it linking it off with IP. And then on your turn, you now have that link three. Uh, all you need to do is put one more body on the board and you can summon that access code talker. Link Karibo gets a lot of your plays going. There's token summon off of Gears, who's a level one, and uh, Brass is a level one. Uh, just gets a lot of your things going. And again, another dark monster, so it just fits the theme to a T. And then against dinos, it can also be used really. Um, to get rid of the token on your side of the field uh, that they summon with Lost World and just prevent your opponent from really doing a whole lot. Uh, one Long Gear Suit, this card isn't out to Dragoon if your opponent's not paying attention. Um, and it's just something that uh, it does come up that you want to shuffle the two back. Uh, in one of the examples, uh, we summon a Long Gear Suit and it would have been live and just another form of interruption on your opponent's turn. One Striker Dragon for the Dragon combo. And then we got one Rusty Bardish because that's all you need in this deck. Uh, the one downside of Rusty is if your opponent does play Mystic Mine on you, you can't link it off. Uh, so that really sucks. Um, and then at which case, you kind of just need to hope to maybe draw a Nightmare, draw a World Wand, and Tribute Summon uh, to get rid of your monsters on the board if your opponent has a monster. Uh, as for the side, uh, side decks will always, I will always preach, your side deck should be built for the event you're playing in. Um, these are just suggestions. Uh, Ash Blossom, uh, I believe this format's going to be really, really important again. Uh, it's good against Virtual World. Uh, I think a lot of decks are going to be a lot slower, uh, so it might it's going to be more impactful. Uh, one Pankratops, this card's really good at going second. Uh, always good at going second. Ghost Spell could be really good this format. It hits a lot of things. Uh, Skullmeister hits a lot of things as well. That's another card you could potentially uh, use in your side deck. Um, they both hit similar things, but different things at the same time. Uh, kind of depends on what you're looking at. Because uh, like Ghost Bell can hit things like the Gear Servant that Skullmeister cannot. But Skullmeister uh, is really good against Dinosaurs because it can hit Baby Sarasaurus. It can hit the Miscellaneousaurus um, and prevent your opponent from go continuing on with their plays that way. Uh, Radiant is another good choice. Kaijus, I think, will always be strong in this game. Uh, especially in slower formats where if you're distributing over something like a Makaba or a Zeus or a Calamities, if your opponent doesn't want to use it uh, preemptively, uh, it just gets rid of the monster and uh, just allows you then to make your plays. Uh, Forbidden Droplet's really good in this deck, uh, especially now that uh, if Herald of the Arclight isn't going to be running around. Um, as long as you can just... Use its effect to send cards from hand to graveyard. Um, you're going to pitch things like your Nightmares, your World Wands, your uh, Gizmax. Like, there's so many things you just want to put in the graveyard uh, that you can use. Um, that Droplet can get the pluses off of. And then lastly, we're playing Twin Twister. Uh, just because you want the discard um, over the Cosmic. Uh, this deck doesn't really have too many problems with back row. Uh, normally, um, so you, you don't care about the cosmic um sometimes the discard does come up though which is why you want it 
once again, I thank everybody for watching. This deck is super, super, super fun. It plays through a lot of things. Uh, it's probably the best way to play Orcus in the current format. It's better than the Scraps, which can lose to a single hand trap. It's better than uh, the PK Orcus I was playing before, which can lose to a single hand trap. There's a lot of things this deck plays through. There's a lot of things your opponent has to take into consideration. Does he have the quick launch in his hand? Does he have a follow-up with like something like Reborn or Burial? Uh, the, the Rota? There's so many things this deck can do playing offensively and defensively. Defensively, This deck's really good at going first. Going second, you can side out things like the Phantom Knight package. Put in hand traps. Put in uh, kaijus. Put in your back row removal. Um, and just continue to push through your opponents that way. Um, but again, I thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for all of the action out of West Texas.